66% of your party members want to stay inside the single market. Will you listen to them? Of course, I will listen to them. The, what I would say is that the important priority is to ensure that we have a tariff-free trade access to the European market. Half of all our trade is with Europe. Uh, I would also say that we need to look very carefully at the terms of any trade relationship because at the moment we're part of the single market obviously that has within it restrictions on state aid and state spending that has pressures on it through the European Union to privatize rail for example and other Just services I think we have to be quite careful about the powers we need as national governments I, I want to ask you more about the single sure. market but you mentioned state aid can you give me an example of the kind of thing you would like to do that membership of the EU stops you doing I would have wanted us to intervene immediately on SSI Redcar when the steel industry was in a crisis at that time. The government claimed there were issues of state aid. We disputed that at the time, but I would also want to say that we would want to be able to invest in industries. Another example, the uh, so Labour, the Labour government... Part of the steel industry. If necessary, yeah. uh, in order to make sure we have a strong steel industry as the basis of a manufacturing economy. But it's also about a, uh, a mixed economy. It's about investment in new industries. And so, for example, I want to see a much bigger renewable sector. Look out here. You've got a fantastic wind farm in the, in the sea out here. I want to see us uh, as a country investing in those industries to make sure they thrive and become well, a source of exports as well. We're doing that by the EU, are we? Well, there are issues of state aid rules which are endlessly disputed. Some countries seem to have no problems flouting state aid right. rules. Others get sat upon very heavily, as, for example, Greece has been sat on very heavily by the European Central Bank. Oh, I accept, no, of course, okay. we're not members of the uh, uh, euro. Now, you've said in the past we can't be members of the single market because that's part of the EU and we are leaving the EU. But from what you say, you want to be absolutely close to the single market. There's a big choice in front of the country. Do we stay inside the force field, the magnetic field of the EU? Do we stay close to the single market and maximise our trade with that and accept what that means? Or yeah. do we turn outside to America? And that is a big choice about indeed, everything in politics. Indeed. I like the point you're making about the force field. I don't want us to become some kind of offshore tax haven on the shores of Europe. Europe. I don't want us to do some sweetheart deal with Donald Trump, which means that you lower environmental consumer and working conditions in the USA, then you lower them in Britain in order to meet the USA, and they go down further and further. Race to the bottom. Very bad. What I want is us to have um, an econ economy that develops and grows, an investment-led economy, um, high-wage, high-activity um, high economy. You do that by an effective trading relationship with Europe. Look, every, one of, our, every one of our manufacturing industries cars, ships, everything else, has a massive supply chain, food industry, food processing industry, sure. all across Europe. You can't you cut can't that off and break that. it. But to, to, to preserve that and ensure that it carries on reasonably friction-free, that means um, making sure that our regulations and our rules are very, very close indeed to those of the EU for a long period oh. to come. It probably means virtually free access to EU citizens coming into this country and ours to there. And it probably, <clears throat> it may even mean paying a little bit in and accepting some of the rulings of the European Court of Justice. We made, it very, we made it very clear throughout the referendum campaign and through the general election campaign that we wanted to protect consumer workers environmental conditions. We want after Brexit to be part of a number of European agencies uh, because it's important to have that. Uh, there has to be some judicial process of settlement uh, of any dispute and indeed Theresa May finally has come round to that position in her Florence speech and so, so you, would, you would stay very, very close to the EU in all of those areas, as Listen, it were? Listen, the referendum took place. There was a result given. I think we have to recognise the economic uh, importance to Europe of us and us to Europe. It's um, a big choice. I think we have mm. to uh, go down an economic road that continues that good relationship with Europe. Is there any positive for Brexit for, for in the northern communities? Well, um... We don't know the way it's going to turn out. If, if at the end of all this, um, Britain becomes more successful in exporting to the rest of the world, well, you know, this is a part of the country that has got export potential. Uh, one of the things I was going to say tonight, and it probably will be a bit controversial with some of the people who are committed to remaining, is that as a result of leaving, 
uh, it, the British government will get more freedom to do things. Uh, for example, if we wanted to subsidise industries, you, at the moment you can't do that because the European Commission blocks it. If you wanted to interfere with trade, I mean, I'm not keen on that because I'm, I'm a free trader basically, but if you did want to block imports, you'd have more freedom to do it. If you want, if, if, if you want to have a system where, say, Liverpool City Council uh, wants to buy from Liverpool companies as opposed to buying from anywhere in Europe, you'll have greater freedom. You know? So if, if, we, if the government wanted greater freedom to help Liverpool or help the north of England, it will have that Brexit. So that's one of the potential advantages. Um, I also suggest in the lecture that if the government does block immigration, which they say they will from Eastern Europe, this will create quite big labour shortages in London and the South East, driving up pay. It will make it more attractive probably for companies to come here. Maybe, maybe, yeah, I, I don't know, but that's a possibility. Uh, and the other thing which um, is a bit um, it, it, uh, imprecise, but at the moment the British economy is very heavily dominated by the City of London and the banking sector. And it may be that if they are damaged or excluded from Europe, that we shall start to think of how we can get a better balanced economy in the UK with more manufacturing and so on. So, so those are all things w which I'd say are possible signs of hope. So it's not all negative.